All right, hey everybody. So we're going to talk about the last topic, which is going to be siege defenses. Now, every now and then you're going to see these type of siege defenses, which have insane win rates. And what you want to do with these type of defenses, what I do personally is I screenshot them and I try to fight them and I see why they're strong, why they're insanely strong. For instance, this defense here, um, they all have will runes on them and they're insanely fast units using the galleon lead. Um, the Perna has some form of sustain and the Theo Mars is insanely tanky as well. This defense has a very high win rate because it's so hard to deal with. I personally do not have the units that can deal with this defense, unfortunately. Maybe other people do. Joey here was able to beat it. But it's really hard to beat a defense like this when you're limited on what units you can use. Obviously, Copper is going to not work against Pernas. So without me pulling these Nat 5s, I can't beat this defense. Other people in our guild with these units, with other Nat 5 units, could probably beat it, but I can't. So when I dissect a defense, I have to be able to understand what makes this defense strong and how to counter it. Okay? And this defense is strong because it's so aggressive. Um, unless you have some heavy immunity, like from the form of using a Wusa, which can outspeed the insanely fast Galleon, you will find yourself defense broken. The other thing is having will runes on a specifically made team. Without a team specifically made with will runes, it's very likely you're going to have a hole in your will runes uh, as your speed tuning is not perfect. And if there's any hole at all, and you find a defense break on any of your monsters, it will die. That's what makes this defense strong. So, today we're going to be talking about siege defenses, um, and how to build a siege defense. Uh, uniquely, we are in G1 in terms of siege battle, and G1 is probably the sweet spot for building defenses. In G3... Um, you're fighting other Guardian ranked players, even if you build a really good defense, they have a really good offense and a really good counter because they're deep into the PvP setting. Here in G1, you'll be fighting players like yourselves who don't necessarily have an established amount of siege offenses. Meaning if you specially build a defense, you will find yourself being able to take on people and have insane win rates like this. Ideally, you want to aim for... Like, in my level, I want to aim for around a 66% win rate, just like what this defense has, approximately 66% win rate. In the lower levels that most of you guys are at in terms of Conqueror rank, you want to try to capture around a 50% win rate. So, let me look at an example of a 50% win rate defense. I wanted to look at Justin's, um, well, okay, I can't do that. How can I look at it? Okay, so this is an example. Um, he actually switched his location. His defense used to be there. He switched it to here. That's a little problematic. But if you look over here, he, Liquid Vapor is a Guardian ranked player. So he has a defense here which has around a 60% win rate, 66% win rate. And that's the ideal sweet spot you're aiming for. Um, a defense like this, um, having a win rate like this of around 30% is still fine. But ideally, you want to find a defense which can have a win rate like this. This is a win rate of 50%. Half the battles he wins, half the battles he loses. And that's what you're really aiming for, okay? So, that's what a good defense is. A good defense is not an unbeatable one, but rather is a defense that captures around a 50% win rate, okay? So, I'm going to review my defenses with you, and hopefully this helps brainstorm ideas. Um, and hopefully you're also watching these videos to the very end, because... Typically, how video making works is I'll come up with my best ideas at the end of the video, and I may record an additional clip at the end. And if there is an additional clip at the end of the video, that means that that's where all the big, juicy main ideas are going to be at. So hopefully you're watching everything to the end. Uh, keep in mind, it takes me a long time to create videos like this. So everything is neatly packaged for you, so make sure to watch everything to the end. Okay, so we're going to dissect my defenses and I'll tell you why they work and why they're strong. This defense is one of my highest win rate defenses of all times. 105 wins and 36 losses. 
This defense has a higher win rate. It's like, what, 70% or something? It's really high. So let's talk about it. So we start off with the Kamun, fully skilled, or kind of fully skilled. Kamun is here because of the shield, and the, he does damage. He hits around 40k damage. Uh, he has a shield, and also um, he has a speed lead. Cool, right? Now the Grogo is here as a distraction. Typically, people ruin Grogo on um, Vampire. The reason why I'm not ruining this Grogo on Vampire, I will tell you later. And then we have a Belladion on Triple Revenge. Okay, so the way that this defense works, it looks really simple. But the reason why it has such a high win rate has to do with the reverse engineering. Okay, and let me answer the question why Grogo is not a Vampire. If you were to attack my defense, who would you attack? The answer is, you would not attack Grogo. In other words, Grogo would never lose HP, so why would I give him Vampire for no reason? He has no reason to gain HP from Vampire, so he doesn't need to, because no one's going to attack him. That's why he's not a Vampire. On the other hand, people are most likely either going to attack the Kamun or the Belladion. Attacking the Belladion has grave consequences because he's on triple revenge and getting rev or triple revenge and getting defense broken will allow my Kamun to hit 40k on you. So, typically people are going to try to attack the Kamun. Uh, and that's why next free rune removal, I'm going to put will runes. I might even put like double will runes on him or triple will runes, just so he can uh, have like triple will, so he has like three turns of immunity. If he has three turns of immunity and the Grogo has like will runes as well, then that means they're forced to attack the Bella, which has triple revenge. And that surprise factor will allow my defense to even have a higher win rate. So this defense has a high win rate because I was able to reverse engineer a way to make this defense work. I'm because it also takes into account. Uh, one more thing, a mathematical concept of effective HP. So take notice on the fact that I'm using defense runes here to make my Belladion's defense higher. Take note that this monster is inherently a high defense monster. Why am I using high defense? The reason why is because when Kamun puts a shield on something with high defense, the shield is harder to break on a defense with high or a, on a unit with high defense than a shield with be on the similar unit with the age with low defense for this reason the defense that's one of the most common defense is Kamun Theo Chasun Kamun Theo Orion Kamun Theo um, those kind of Kamun Theo comps are probably not the best and the reason why is because the Theo Mars has such a low base defense putting a Kamun shield on Theo Mars is easy to break However, putting a Kamun shield on a high defense unit is harder to break. So we're using math here. The other mathematical concept we're using is a mathematical concept which Math Plus Games reviews, and that is the concept of God Shields. In the concept, basically the Kamun shield, uh, theoretically speaking, if I were to put a Kamun shield on Grogo, because of Grogo's passive, you can't deal more than 20% of my max HP. So I have about 15k max HP, meaning 20% is like, what, 3k? Let me... 15,000 divided by... Uh, or times... 15,000 times 0.2. So you can't deal more than 3,000 damage on me. And the Kamun shield is probably like 8,000 HP, meaning in order for you to even break the shield, you have to hit the Grogo like a couple of times. Meaning Grogo can't even have his shield be broken. So for that reason, that's even more reason for why Grogo is not a vampire. So we're using different math concepts here and high defense for that reason. And that's why this defense has such a high win rate. It's a very well thought out defense, despite the fact that these units look very easy to obtain. Next defense. So this defense has a 46, uh, has a 60% win rate as well, approximately. 42 wins, 24 losses. Let's take a look at this defense. Okay, so one of the more important concepts, especially when making damage dealers, is the concept of different colors. We previously talked about fighting different teams. If I were to fight a Ciara Fenyang team, I would bring Rina, and Rina would be able to tank both the Ciara bombs and the Fang Yang's attempts to defense break. They would never actually hurt my Rina, 
Or if they do hurt the Rena, the Rena can heal herself up. Especially if I'm putting Rakuni next to Rena, Rakuni will also heal the Rena. The main point that I'm making here is when you're making a defense and you're building multiple threats, namely multiple damage dealers, do not use the same element. And I see this mistake so often. So many of our defenses have this mistake. So many of the enemy's defenses will have similar mistakes. Actually, these defenses are really good. Holy shit. This is an example of what I would say is not a good defense. Look at the win rate. The other defenses here are probably significantly better. Um, these defenses are probably actually really good. But this defense specifically is a bad example. Why? Because the Kamun and the Garo are two different threats, which are both the same element. Meaning that if I take a water damage dealer, such as the water ninja or the water assassin, um, water kung fu girl, lapis, I can take so many different answers and I can use that one unit to defeat both of his threats. That is why you should not, like, it's as simple as that. This is a simple concept in the beginning of the game that you learn about the, um, you know, the rock, paper, scissors between water, fire, and wind monsters. But it's so pivotal in defense building. So, for that reason, this defense with 42 wins utilizes two different element of damage dealers. Let me explain. The Garo, oh jeez, the Garo here is runes with vampire. Uh, these are really high, really strong vampire runes. Um, it's going to be hard to mimic these stats. But this is my best vampire set on Garo. Okay, he's runed on vampire. So, how is the enemy going to kill my Garo? The enemy wants to kill my Garo by bringing a water unit. Right? So, if they bring a water unit, they can kill my Garo. But, I have Fuko here. If they bring a water unit to attack my Garo, my Fuko is going to kill their water unit. So you under you have to understand that the reason why I chose Garo and Fuko next to each other is because the Fuko being a wind unit actually protects my Garo. So this is the concept of using an offensive unit to be a support. Right? I think the most obvious example would be using Perna. Perna obviously supports his whole team by healing. But, this is a more subtle example, because Garo is weak against water, putting Fuko there will discourage people from bringing a water damage dealer to fight um, the Garo, right? On the, on the other thing, this whole entire defense is strong because all three members of this defense can CC. The Fuko, being in a 3v3 fight, can use his second skill every two turns to stun and defense break. That defense break is lethal. If, Gar if Fuko gets a defense break, that thing is probably going to die. The Fran here is on revenge. Uh, Fran being probably something that they would want to kill. Fran being able to revenge would be able to attack break and stun. The Fuko also stuns. The Garoa also stuns at a two turn cooldown. So this is a very um, potent defense that if you're not mentally prepared and rune prepared to fight against, you will lose pretty quickly against this defense. All right, next defense. So this defense here didn't do very well. This defense is my attempt to use my second Theo Mars and to use my second Molong. The idea here with this defense is that the Molong would simply function as a defense break bot. So the Molong is there with his force leader skill and the Molong is speed tuned to move right before Theo Mars. Molong moves and does his defense break every now and then, and then the Theo Mars would move and kill it. But the problem is, um, they're both the same element, and the Harmonia is there to kind of like work off of the Molong. I thought that it would be a clever idea, I was hoping it was at least going to get a 50% win rate, since these are dupes and my Harmonia is not even skilled up all the way. But unfortunately, this defense fell flat on its face. But there was a thought process behind it. Next defense here is another Kamun, uh, we have the Wind Barbarian, and we have Orion. So, this defense is in a nat 4 base, okay? 
And if you look at this defense, it almost looks very similar to a famous defense that we all know. That famous defense being Kamun, Theo, and Orion. But here's the problem with that defense. If you put Theo Mars, you now subject your defense into, you put your defense into the Nat 5 towers, meaning that your opponents can attack you using triple Nat 5s. If you take out that Theo Mars and you put in another Nat 4 in its place, now you have three Nat 4s and you're putting that into a Nat 4 base. Now the enemies have to fight you using only Nat 4s. That is the power of switching out the Theo Mars. Okay, I switched the Theo Mars in favor of a Nat 4 damage dealer, this Wind Barbarian King. And of course the Wind Barbarian King being able to cycle through turns and speed buff my team, my Kamun being a damage dealer, um, the Orion bringing a defense break and also being fast and cycling through turns. Um, this defense works off of brute rune quality. That being said, this defense's success is inspiring me to make another defense, and I will explain that. So, instead of using that Wind Barbarian King, there's the option to use this unit here, which is actually stronger than I previously looked at. Doesn't need skill ups, a very strong unit, and I'm going to build a second Orion. And as you know, I have three Kamuns, so I'm just going to use that other Kamun and use a team like this. The other thing is, there is a famous defense that's been used in Garden Ranks, High Garden Ranks, like this. This defense utilizes a Iris, which is 260 speed despair, with the Kamun leader skill. This Iris is insanely fast, but it's not even the fastest unit on the team, the fastest unit being the Orion, which people would have at like 290 speed plus the Kamun leader skill. This defense is just brute force, it has strips, it has everything. Now, the reason why this defense is strong is typically people will bring twins to try to beat you, but with the Orion's possibility of stunning the twins, and also the Iris's possibility of stunning, this defense is very hard to deal with. The better your rune quality is, the better this defense is, and that is some a concept called absolutes. I will talk about absolutes and I'll, I'll progress into absolutes later on in this video, but you can see that from the success of this Kamun Orion and um, Kamun Orion Wind Barbarian King defense, like, look at this. Every single one of the members of this guild was getting trashed. Mind you, this Bacon guy, he's actually a Guardian ranked player. So I'm beating Guardian ranked players using this defense. It's not like I was beating, like, crappy players. Like, he is also Guardian ranked. So we know that this defense actually has good success, okay? And from the success of this defense, I'm able to theorycraft other defenses, um, coming up with um, me building a second Orion and using that as well as using the Iris. So that's good. Let's talk about the next defense. This defense here is my main Molong, the uh, Triana, and the um, Tessarion. Now, this defense is not ideal. Ideally, I would have a Laika, Laika being insanely OP, and using a Laika in this defense, my win rate would be even higher, but unfortunately, I don't have Laika, but the concept of this defense is three colors. You see that the Laika, specifically, I'm choosing a fire unit, and that fire unit is there to do, you know, it's there to do fire unit things, I guess. Um, so this defense works, but I'm probably going to scrap it later. Um, for something with more healing ability. Now, what I've thought about for this defense, every defense has quite a bit of thought, is this Triana. Okay, so how would you kill this defense? I think if I were to attack this defense, I would copper the Triana, and then after that I would copper the Molong, and after that I would just kill the, um, kill the, uh, fire Ifrit, right? You, you can't copper the Molong first. You have to copper the Triana first. You have to get rid of the Triana first. For that reason, this Triana is actually on Copper Trap runes. High defense runes, so that that way, if you try to copper it, your copper does no damage. This Triana was thought out specifically to be put with the Molong, so that for that reason, they could not copper me comfortably. So that's why. Um, ways to improve this defense, uh, I should bring some strippers. 
if I bring a strip, then, well, Molong's technically a stripper, but if I bring a strong strip, it would be very hard for them to deal with this with a bulldozer. All right, we're back. I had to take a break from recording yesterday. Okay, so um, this is pretty much the last segment of my series of my little guide. So I'm going to try to spill everything else uh, information-wise aside from just defenses in this part because aside from this, I don't plan on recording more unless someone specifically requests me to do a specific portion. So um let's see the thing about learning how to make a offense and or a defense they kind of go together okay i mentioned earlier about looking up random youtubers there are a lot of youtubers out there i i looked them up yesterday to even look up more um there's a guy named gambino games he really sucks at commentary he's a g3 youtuber he sucks at um, making offenses and making defenses, to be honest. But what he does do is he does feature his guildies, which are really good at making offenses and defenses. And you get to see how they take down very difficult defenses. As some of you may or may not be aware of, uh, one of the most overpowered net 4 defenses that are very prevalent in the G3 scene right now is Skogel. They use Kamun Leader Skill, Skogel, and Triana. And if you look onto G3 YouTubers' defenses right now, uh, none of us are in G3 uh, Siege, obviously, but if you go and look, Skogel, or um, Kamun, Skogel, Triana is rampant in every single G3 defense. They'll have 10 defenses of just that. And yeah, I mean, that that's what it is. And if you go on to Gambino Games, like obviously him himself, he sucks at, um, he sucks at attacking. But if you look at his guildies, his guildies will show you some unique ways to beat those defenses, which is quite nice. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is um, slow cleaves. Okay, so I showed this earlier, but I don't think I gave enough evidence. Um, and basically what I'm trying to say is, before I attack every defense, I specifically check the history. And I urge every single person to do that right the reason why is if you were to attack me right and you click this battle history and you saw 106 wins and 37 losses if you were one of the weaker members of the guild you might hold back your attack because you would might just lose the attack whereas you might ask a stronger member hey this guy has 106 wins um i'm giving you a heads up right now his defense is probably tricky but you're stronger, so you should probably try to take it out. That kind of thing. In other words, what I'm saying is, a, looking at the defense uh, history will give you an indication of the enemy's rune quality, first of all. But second of all, also the enemy's um, defense's uh, rune patterns, I guess I'll say. So there's a concept called slow cleave. And we briefly mentioned it when we talked about arena offense. Slow cleave in arena offense is very prevalent and it works. Examples of slow cleave. For instance, if my Amir is 130 speed, my Galleon is 140 speed, and my Water Homunculus is 130 speed, what would happen is if I put all three of those units on shield will runes and I made every single one of those units very tanky and high in offense, which is very easy because they're only 130 speed, and if I did that, even if the enemy Theomars or the enemy Pernaprox four times, it's very likely that your defense will still be alive. After they do their moves, all you do is Galleon moves first, defense breaks, and then the Amir moves and hits everything, and then the Water Homunculus moves and hits everything. Typically, the Amir moving and hitting everything is already enough to kill the whole team. But since I mentioned there's a Perna, yeah, you, you let the Water Homunculus take care of the Perna. The whole point of this is slow cleave and offense works really well. The example that I gave earlier was with the Basalt, uh, Lure, and Zinc. And I said that that was a combo that I found on Reddit. There are many, 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 many combos like this. For instance, the new ninja that we got, the Dark Assassin, right? Um, this Dark Assassin here, I didn't actually summon it yet. 
I will utilize her soon. This Dark Assassin, because she can attack buff herself. She doesn't need Galleon. If you build her in slow cleave, all you have to do is put Lure over there. Lure being the defense breaking water phantom thief. Right? All he needs is the, all she needs is the defense break because she can attack buff herself. So you can just do a slow cleave with just these two. What would the team look like? It would be Lure. It would be her. And then you could put a Harmonia or a Treon on the third slot. If you have Vela Jewel, you can put Vela Jewel on the third slot. If you have Fran, you can put Fran on the uh, third slot. The main point is you want a Cleanser on the third slot. This makes Slow Cleave even safer, especially if you're attacking Orion. What if you're? Uh, what if she gets um, stunned by Orion by some miraculous, like he strip stuns the will? Then what happens is your Fran, your Vela Jewel, your uh, Harmonia, your um, your Triana, whatever unit you're using, goes first and actually can cleanse the stun off of her so that the combo still goes through. There are multiple forms of slow cleave that do this, okay? So slow cleave is a great offense. Another form of slow cleave, uh, this is why I tell you people to not feed your dupes, okay? Especially Nat 5 dupes. Uh, if you're using a Nat 5 Charlotte, for instance, if you're using uh, multiple Rika, if you're using multiple, uh, this is like one of the more useless Nat 5s, to be honest, in my opinion. Uh, Fung Beck, I barely have any win Nat 5s, like seriously. This one over here, you don't even need skill ups on him. If you slow cleave with him, what skill is it? It's like this skill. You slow cleave using him, all the enemies move first and Galleon goes and then Fung Beck moves once and he hits like 60k on one of the enemies, everyone dies. Um, so even dupes of him are really useful. Dupes of Tashar are useful. Just make him really slow and tanky. And then after everyone moves, just hit him. Dupes of the Lagmorons, those are really good. Um, well, not him. He has different purposes. What the point I'm making is you can still use your dupe offensive Nat 5s um, because they work in slow cleat. They work really well. Um, so for me, where is it? Dupe Beth, for instance, Dupe Alicia. Um, this one works as well, especially well since he can control the bars. Uh, even honestly, uh, Dupe Samath because the Samath over here can reset cooldowns, which may be very useful, uh, especially since he hits so hard. So yes, even Dupe Samath has uses. Okay, so these offensive net fives can always be used in slow cleave which is why i have two galleons built because it's that important okay so slow cleave is a concept that works in offense but the reason why i'm talking about this is because it's also a concept that works in defense okay now there are some instances where i've seen defenses right and this is again I'm, this is um the whole discussion why i'm going in loops i've seen some defenses with like 70% win rates or even 50% win rates that look really shitty. The defense is Xeros leader skill, Fung Beck, the wind, um, what's his name? The wind pioneer and Galleon. Xeros, Fung Beck, Galleon. Why does that defense have a 50% win rate when that defense looks like it should be easily taken out? The reason why is because that defense is a slow cleave defense. Now what will typically happen is an enemy will walk in with a pretty fast team of like 100 speed, plus 100 speed as your teammates, right? You go in, you do your first turn, and you attack the enemies, but the enemies, um, the Xeros, the Fungbeck, and the Galleon are really tanky, they're on will and shield runes, they're really tanky and they're designed to move second. In other words, this enemy defense is designed to tank your Xeros or your um, Theomars hitting them like three times. Unless you walk in with strippers, you're not going to do much. So what can you do to handle this situation? First of all, you need to check the defense's history to make sure. Just like if you check my defense's history over here, you can realize, hey, this guy's got some sort of a trick. If you check that defense's history and you see a high win rate, you can therefore deduce that there is a trick going on. And the trick is typically going to be a slow cleave comp. So what you can do is you can bring your Tiana if you have one. Your Tiana Zeros combo will clearly and easily take care of them. Or you can bring an even slower slow cleave. Um, 
because they're probably going to be a medium cleave defense, to be honest, especially if it's in defense. So you can bring a slower cleave where it's like only plus uh, 30 speed. So your whole team is only like 130 speed each. And that'll take care of it. The main point that I'm making is slow cleave is a very powerful option in both offense and defense. And also, um, you can take advantage of the fact that most people in Guild Wars are not going to look at the defense history, which tells so much more information than uh, you can think about. Okay, so there are some instances. I think it was so one. We took a. I created a slow cleave defense. A slow cleave offense for him, I believe. Or, well, no, it's this one. So, you see that this defense here, this defense here is an example of a slow cleave. Uh, his defense here actually has a pretty good win rate. That's actually, uh, he only lost one out of four, which means that that's actually 75% win rate. Now, the pool is a tiny um, sample size, but it goes to show that this defense was definitely working. How does this defense work? Well, let's look at how fast his Galleon is. His Galleon is really fast, but it's on Will Runes. Shield Will. His Zeros, also on Will Runes. And this unit, also on Will Runes. So, what ends up happening is, because everything here is it's not really that tanky, to be honest. That's actually really squishy. Uh, Theomar is that Prox one time will kill this thing. Um, but, if the enemy's not expecting the Will Runes, right, and the Shield Runes, Enemy walks in, does some stuff, but doesn't really do anything. Then his Galleon defense breaks, or his, first the strip happens, the defense break, and then the Xeros hits them. Um, this is an example of a poorly built slow cleave. Even though it's poorly built, it still works successfully. Okay, so this is, I mean, this is slow cleave, right? So there you go. Um, typically, it's... Slow cleave does not require a uh, stripper like the Soha, but it works. So with that being said, I'm going to go on and continue reviewing my defenses. Okay, so this is the Skogel defense. Um, so this Skogel defense here uh, is really powerful. Uh, this is a new unit, first of all. So I knew that most people would not be able to handle it. Um, and this is why I say, if you go onto the G3 YouTube channels, you'll see Skogel being used in a lot of options. The thing is, just because a player is G3 does not mean they're better than you in terms of defense building and offense building. Just because they're G3 does not mean that. It just means they farmed more than you and they spent more money than you. It doesn't mean that they're smarter than you are. So, whatever defenses you see in G3, don't just immediately copy them. But think about them. Skogel in this defense, I came up with this defense myself. Like, I didn't take it from any other G3 player. Now, this defense works because Skogel is on Vampire. You can make Skogel on um, any skills, uh, any runes that you want, to be honest. But I made Skogel on Will Vamp. Will Vamp. Um, reason being, I wanted him to be able to independently fight on his own, if needed. Will runes because, obvious reasons, you don't want him to be stunned. 50% resistance on purpose because the GN has 55 resistance. Again, remember the concept. Don't just build individual units. Build a whole team. This Gogol was ruined with the intention of 50% resistance. With the intention that he would be placed side by side with GN. So, that Gogol was ruined with that as like with that as part of the intention okay i ruined units even with the leader skills so the other thing is this gogo was ruined with the intention to survive bulldozers typically stronger bulldozers may hit like 44k so gogo has that much hp to survive it plus the gian shield runes which i specifically chose on gian so that that way the gogo would survive a bulldoze attack if it needed to survive one. Then after the Atlas Stone has dropped the Skogel will vampire back up. So, this GN is not ruined too well. I would definitely like her to have more HP, but her purpose is very simple. She's supposed to be faster so that she can function as a distraction. She can keep on pulling the enemies to hit her while the Skogel keeps dropping the stones on everybody. And the only thing that my defense would be weak against is if the enemy has a, um, an Amelia, for instance, uh, would really screw me over, to be honest. But uh, Wusa, 
If they had a Wusa, you know, it would screw me over. Therefore, I went with the stripper so that that way no one could be immune to all these provokes. So this defense works uh, pretty well for two reasons. First of all, because it's a new monster, so... <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a new monster, so people don't know how to handle it. But second of all, it works really well because um, it's a well, it's a well-built defense. Excuse me. Okay, so things I would do to change this defense. I recently pulled a Lima, the LD, um, the LD one over here. I'll show you. I recently pulled Lima. She's also a stripper, but not only that, but she can cleanse. I previously mentioned that the Skogel is on will runes because the Skogel needs to not be status effect, which is why he also has 100% resist. Nonetheless, just because he has 100% resist and starts the battle with will runes does not mean that he's immune to status effects. Therefore, we will use her to strip just like the Juno does, but we will also have a cleanse over here, cleanse invincibility and some heal over times. So, that will improve my defense's success rate even further, and that's what I will do. And plus, people don't know how to deal with Lima, um, so, you know, just the unknown factor. People don't know how to deal with XYZ unit, it makes it even better. So, how would you beat my defense? You could beat this defense, theoretically, with some super copper, like a fast copper. I imagine Ganymede, Emesity, Copper would beat this defense. Uh, the Ganymede being able to deal with the um, annoying Gian, the Emesity, Copper being able to deal with the Skogel quickly, and then the Ganymede's reset making the Copper go again and hammer me a second time. So that would be a way to beat my defense. Not everyone has Ganymede, first of all. And second of all, not everybody thinks about how you beat this defense like that. Therefore, I can still win. This defense here, uh, this is a leftover defense to be honest, um, I really was kind of expecting it to have a 50% win rate to be honest, um, very simple defense, historically speaking, I in the past had a defense with over 100 wins and I scrapped it, that past defense was Jian, Kumar, and Kraka. As you notice, this defense still has the Kumar, Kraka, but instead of the Jian, I took her out and I put in... Uh, Praha. So, this defense was made from previous success. It is speed tuned to where G the Kraka goes first, and then the um, the Kumar goes next. Uh, I felt like this was a somewhat okay, kind of sloppy, but kind of okay built defense. It has like a me a method. Two healers, defense break is there. Uh, especially if you're using bruisers like this, uh, you want more defense breaks. Problem with this defense is it's a double support one damage dealer defense, and that one damage dealer is kind of subpar. So, um, this defense, I didn't expect it to have any higher win rate, but I didn't expect it to have a low win rate either. Um, it's doing what it's supposed to do, is all I'm saying. Next defense. So I previously mentioned earlier, um, before I cut this video, I previously mentioned something about the concept of absolutes. Let's talk about absolutes, okay? This is probably one of the last concepts that I will talk to you about regarding defense and offense building. Okay, if you have a 320 speed Bernard, you can pretty much guarantee that that is a absolute. Absolute in the idea that no one can outspeed a 320 speed Bernard, right? Another idea of an absolute is when I yesterday fought that um, offense, or I fought that defense, remember that Nat 5, LD Nat 5 defense that I fought? Sylvia with a 33% speed lead versus, it was Sylvia, Tessarion, and Cilia, the Light uh, Harmonia, whatever that one's called the light heart magician which has a 113 base speed because of the 113 base speed and because of the 33 percent speed leader skill that is an example of an absolute no matter what i do they will take the first turn therefore that is an absolute okay so taking that as a concept we can build defenses using absolutes as well what if my messity had like 310 speed that is almost considered an absolute, and especially in this 
um, ranking where you're fighting Conqueror ranked players and some Guardian ranked players. Guardian ranked players don't necessarily even have the ability to outspeed you, so you can therefore assume that even Conqueror ranked players can't outspeed you. So had I had a 310 speed Immensity, this defense may have amounted to something. But this defense here is just a filler. I just had nothing else, so I threw something in there. Uh, was not intending it to win at all, but I just needed to throw something in there. Um, so yeah, it is what it is, but that is an example of an absolute. We're going to skip over to the bottom defense. This is another example of an absolute. Now, example, my Bernard has like almost like what, 306 speed. So it's pretty fast. 306 speed, not many people can outspeed that in this rank. Plus the Galleon lead, this makes this Bernard an absolute. Um, typically if the AI works correctly, I will get a good win rate, which is why this defense has around a 66% win rate, despite being a very poorly built defense. Even poorly built defenses can work with brute rune quality, and that is an example of absolutes. Let me give you more examples of absolutes. If you have the Dark Pirate, right, the Dark Pirate, which is OP as shit, might I add. Where is he? This guy, right? Typically, you can pair him up with Galleon. Galleon plus this Dark Pirate will typically uh, end up with an absolute in um, in speeds, okay? So that's one thing. That's definitely an absolute. Other examples, especially if you're using uh, speed lead um, Ganymede, I mean, not Ganymede, speed lead um, Gemini, Gemini and Orion and Fey. Fey is an example of a unit that, unfortunately, like, I got beaten by this defense with Fey on it, and I attacked it, like, four times, and I just couldn't beat it. Um, I don't remember the specific defense details. I have it screenshotted somewhere, but the defense details had Fey, and he, it was an absolute speed, so he would always go first, right? He goes first, and you can't even outspeed him, and then his Fey moves, and instantly... You have no option except to tank the Fey. And I tried multiple ways to tank Fey, but the reason why this works, right? Because um, I tried to recreate this defense. I was theory crafting a way to recreate it. But there's no monster in Summoner's War that could recreate what Fey does. Fey is a unique unit that's too overpowered. What I tried was the Dark Assassin. Where is it? Well, you already know what the Dark Assassin is. You got it from HOH. Um, I tried the Dark Assassin. The problem with the Dark Assassin, just like other uh, units, is uh, if I bring Halfass into this, the Dark Assassin will hit the Halfass, and I'll pretty much my defense will pretty much fail, right? Other examples: um, this Light Golem here. This Light Golem can tank five hits. Doesn't matter if my Dark Assassin hits 70k, because it will only do 3,000 damage to him. He can tank 5 hits, no matter what. So because of that, you can't recreate that defense with an Absolute, unless you have Fey. So, again, the defense, I think it was like... Gemini, Frigate, Fey, or something like that. Like, you can't outspeed that. There's almost no way to outspeed it, and even if you do outspeed it, you can't fight the Frigate. And the reason why is because the Frigate has a 50% uh, bar increase, whereas if you were to use Bernard, Bernard only has a 30% bar increase. It's very likely that even if you outspeed the Frigate, the Frigate will use this 50% bar increase, and your Lucian, if you're trying to Lucian it, your Lucian won't even be fast enough to follow up when the phase even slower than your Lucian, but because of the 50% bar increase that the enemy Frigate provides, that makes it more absolute, and therefore you will be outsped in one shot. So, how can I improve my absolute? This defense here, I can improve it, and in fact, I could probably make a defense with like 80% success rate if I do two things. First of all, I need to make a god Lucian. And what I mean is a cheeseburger Lucian with like zero speed on it, just super high attack. It does like 15k per card. If I can make a cheeseburger Lucian, that's one thing. Second of all, I need to make a absolute uh, speed booster. What would that speed booster be? I had the opportunity and the privilege to pull one of the best absolute units that nobody knows about, and that's Dova. So, if I make my Dova 310 speed, and I use Galleon Leader Skill, or Kamun, let's say I use Kamun lead with the 24 speed lead, uh, Dova, 
and Lucian, a fat Lucian that hits 15k per card with no speed on it. Dova will go first, and his passive will attack buff the Lucian. It always attacks buffs the Lucian. And then um, this happens, and then Dova immediately surges the Lucian. Lucian just amps, hits 15k per card. That is an absolute defense, and probably a really good absolute defense if I had like a 310 speed Dova that in instantly I would have an insanely high win rate. Unfortunately, I don't have the rune quality to build such a defense because I don't have the rune quality to build a Lucian that hits that hard. But in the future, I do plan to do that. Uh, and that's also the same for you guys. I'm telling you guys this information because I'm hoping that in the future, we will be able to build God Lucians and make some really nice defenses. Uh, okay, so I forgot to mention, one of the most common absolutes that you will see in the top rankings and one of those defenses that time and time again has shown to be really powerful is going to be Susano, Orion, and Garo. Um, the defense is really common and it's really hard to deal with. So typically absolutes will deal with some sort of a speed leader skill and uh, let's say Orion. Now, here's the thing about absolutes. You don't necessarily need to have a 310 speed Orion. In fact, most of us can't even achieve that. But if you just have a three, a 270 speed Orion, which is not unreasonably fast, I would say, a 270, 280 speed Orion with the speed leader skill, that on its own is pretty much an absolute. So absolute does not necessarily mean that you're going to score first place against people i mean in terms of speed right absolute simply means that if you fight a majority of the people you're going to win that's all absolute really means um but yeah besides that uh, that's all i wanted to add extra okay so final defense here this is another uh example get um i guess what i'll say here is this defense does not have the rune quality. My runes are not good enough to make this defense work, okay? In order for this defense to work, my Belness and my, um, my Gemini need to have like 260 speed. If my Belness Gemini combo had like 260 speed, this defense would work. My defense right now, they're not fast enough, so it won't work. So basically what I'm telling you is, let's go back to these fundamental dungeons here to end off the video because we should be farming okay you need to figure out where your rune deficiencies are just because you lack will runes does not mean you should just go to farm this dungeon however as i said previously there are many people with really strong defenses that are just brute force violet runes they don't even use will runes and they work they work really well so don't feel obligated to farm will runes if you don't need them yet okay but if you are in doubt, always farm always farm dragons. But the thing is, farming giants endlessly has its benefits. And those benefits are going to show themselves in the forms of the absolutes. Okay? An absolute, again, those 260 speed Geminis, those are absolutes. People are going to struggle to deal with those. Um, your 310 speed Bernard, that's pretty much an absolute. Because who's going to outspeed that? So... Those brute force, high speed despair, and swift runes are going to give you absolutes, okay? So, I'm going to end the video off with that. If you have any specific questions, uh, message me in-game or on the line chat app, and I'll do my best to answer anything. Uh, if you have any video requests, go ahead and ask them, but for, <clears throat> excuse me, but for now, um, that concludes this series, a six episode series about how to improve in Summoner's War. Um, again, I put a lot of work into this and a lot of time into this. And this is what I tell to people. Um, not to guilt trip you or anything, but if I can put this much time and effort into building a guide that doesn't help me personally, and it's a guide that's supposed to help people improve, if you can't even have the effort to watch the whole guide through, with this much information inside, you're definitely not going to have the enough effort to actually improve in this game. I know it's just a game, right? It's just a game, but I think that for all of us, we've been playing this game for quite a while, so this is probably more than just a tiny little game, right? This is 
a portion of our life, a small portion of our life at least. So if we're gonna play this game every day, we might as well do it right, and we might as well improve on it. Uh, at least that's my logic. So um, take what you will from that. If you have any questions, always feel free to ask. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in game.